have recovered unless you're using AMP. And then you end up with colonies. So then after plating, you get colonies. So you get a plate, a bunch of colonies on it. From here, you pick your colonies. So pick colonies. All that really consists of is taking a toothpick or a pipette tip, stabbing one of those colonies, and then moving it into a culture tube. That goes at 37 degrees, shaking overnight, or if you have one of those temperature sensitive origins at 30 degrees, so be aware. And oh yeah, I should have said plate, and when you plate, you let this grow overnight, plate overnight at either 37 is, is typical, but sometimes you need to go 30. And then you pick your colonies after growth overnight. Uh, you then shake them at the appropriate temperature overnight. And the next morning you go from clear liquid, clear LB or 2IT or whatever media you're using to a cloudy media. So you end up with a tube that has um, a lot of bacteria in it. From there, Oh boy, I'm running out of space. From here, you can mini prep. So let's uh, need some more space. Whoops. Change colors to how about green? So we're going to mini prep. Mini prep. And that just involves pelleting your cells. Uh, lysing or resuspending, lysing, neutralizing, and then it's kind of similar to a Zymo. Uh, there's some really key differences, but the overall procedure is you're just spinning your 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 DNA containing liquid through a column and washing it and then eluding it. So then you do the mini prep. I'm not going to go through those steps again. That's all uh, on in different videos, and then you end up with a tube with some plasma DNA in it. And now we're starting to get back to where we started up here, except that before we can get to the real start, so this is now AB, or what we think is AB, uh, we're going to have to map. So mini prep, and then we're going to do the QC, which is the next uh, big step, which involves mapping. And for us, we do EcoBAM mapping. So as just a quick reminder, if we have our plasmid, we have our part, we have an eco bagel bam, we just cut right there and right there. And then we can take a look at the size of our vector and the size of our part. If those make sense, then we proceed to sequence. And after we have sequence confirmed, we then can restart the cloning cycle. So AB is checked off, it's been QC'd, and now we can do the entire thing again. So this goes all the way back up to the beginning. So if we move all the way back, we go through our time machine. Whoa, look at that thing, it's crazy. There's so much stuff to do. And whoa, here's our cloning cycle. And now we're back here, so we have AB, comes all the way back here and we'll say now this is AB and we're going to be adding DC together. So oops, DC. So and we'll just say that DC was made in parallel. So now we can do this whole thing over again. So AB, DC, you know you cut them out, you run them on the gel, you you cut the gels out, you do a gel purification, you zymo, you elute, you then do your ligation, so you're ligating here, you then do your transformation, we're still in ligation, now we do our transformation, we just do a heat shock transformation and then we recover it and then we plate it on whatever antibiotics we need to plate it on, we put it in the incubator at 37 degrees for the most part overnight we end up with a plate where we have colonies we can pick those colonies we can grow them up in culture our culture goes from being clear to cloudy and then we can mini prep that 
Uh, the mini prep just consists of pelleting, resuspending, lysing, uh, neutralizing and crashing out all the junk, uh, spinning it on a mini prep column, washing it off a few times, drying it and eluding it. We end up with a tube full of DNA, which then needs to get QC'd. We QC our tube of DNA by mapping it, then sequencing it. After it gets QC'd, it gets the check. And now we have A, B, D, C. Then we can repeat the entire process one more time for good repetition. So we go all the way up. And then you can start to see now what is happening. So we have A, B, D, C. Oops. And now let's just pretend that we have Z, F that we're going to be doing here. So we just whole procedure happens all over again. So A, B, D, C uh, gets mixed with Z, F. We bagelzo, bamzo, digest. We put that in the incubator for an hour or two. We run it on a gel. We cut out the band that we want. We gel purify the band. We elute our digested DNA. We then get ready to do a ligation. This is what the ligation should look like. We do our ligation. That's the formula for the ligation. We then transform our new composite plasmid into the bacteria. We recover. We plate on the appropriate antibiotics. We then put our plate in the incubator at about 37 degrees overnight. We come back the next morning. We pick colonies into clear LB, 2YT, SOB broth, or whatever our media is. We put that in the shaker overnight at 37 degrees, or if you're using a temperature sensitive origin at 30 degrees. You go from clear LB media to cloudy LB media. That means that you have saturated culture. From there, you mini prep. From the mini prep, you get a tube of DNA that hopefully has your composite part. Then you QC it. That means you're going to be mapping it. You're going to be eco bamming it to make sure that the sizes look good. And then if it passes that test, you then sequence it. Once it's sequenced, it gets the check off and you can repeat the procedure one more time. So that's the last time we're going to go through it. One quick note, I wanted to make a quick aside. Um, there is one kind of QC step that you can do before or I guess during this area. In between or during the picking, you can do what's called a colony PCR. And basically that just involves picking your colony into both a PCR reaction as well as a culture tube and then just keeping note of what is what. So you can run the colony as the template for your PCR reaction. The PCR program will go to 95 degrees for about 10 minutes. It will kill off all of the bacteria and then you're just left with a bunch of template that can run that PCR reaction and if you get a band that's the right size when you run the gel, when you run the contents of that PCR reaction, if you labeled your tubes right, you should know exactly which culture tube you want to go ahead and mini prep. And then you can just go on from there. That just gives you the answer a little bit earlier. So that's a couple of run throughs, the cloning cycle. If you have any questions or if you want any elaboration, let me know. Um, and we'll be back soon with more videos.